Travis, Love Will Come Through on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, etc. Got some uh, great tunes actually lined up. Excellent. I've brought in uh, some Amy Mann, some uh, uh, Neil Young. I'm playing my favourite Clash track. What, are you, what have you got for us, Steve? I've got a dynamite uh, hip hop tune by yeah. The Roots, which I think you enjoy. Love it, um, love it. Got a little bit of uh, Joni Mitchell, maybe swing that on later. Oh, and, excellent. Um, I nearly brought in some Joni Mitchell. It's a good job I didn't. Yeah, exactly. Well, it wouldn't have made, sure made any difference. No, you, we, we, we you'd have played, probably played yeah. yours and then yeah. I'd have been Fine. told to. Go away. Go away with uh, Carl, what have you got lined up for us as the producer? <laughs> right, well, uh, uh, Rockbusters. Been Excellent. off this week again. Has he? Yeah. He's another had, week off? Another week off, yeah. 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 No, I didn't have a full week off. I had three days off yeah. because I was working all over Christmas. Yeah. And, uh, still didn't stop working, preparing stuff. <laughs> You've got a nice load of prizes there that yeah, I've sorted out. I had to come in especially to sort that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Rockbusters Did you rifle continue. through the drawers up at Capital Gold instead of Daniel? Yeah. 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 Uh, Rockbusters were still doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that. Yeah, you're bigging it up. Yeah. He's bigging <laughs> it up. Yeah. Still doing that. We've yeah. got that. Uh, last week, um, we sort of changed educating Ricky a bit. Um, just a little don't bit. Don't say we. I don't want to be incriminated in it. Well, yeah. we'll change it in a sense that rather than giving you too much information about different things, it's hard to sort of keep it all in. Yeah. I'm giving you sort of information on one thing, so yeah. last, last no, week- No, cause some of your stuff was a little bit too intense to be done. Uh, my favourite story was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and got better, and I couldn't take all that in at once. <laughs> yeah. So you should really ration well, some we, of the we education. Sort of, we sort of Wasn't last week, um, war related, uh, stories? Yeah, it was, uh, war, do you think of that then? War, and it was that, three sure. things- And it was the French, um, battle. Uh, going over the top was John's got a moustache, <laughs> which you think was ambiguous because someone might have said that anyway. Well, look, you've remembered it, so it's working. So yeah. we'll be doing that. And, and last week, loads you of said French people have just gone to war. Who were well, listening to this? Yeah. You uh, you said you wanted to learn some science this week. Did so, I? Yeah. <laughs> so so the title this week for that is Acid. I would sort you some science out. <laughs> Acid. Acid, that's How long did that take you to call Listen, it? Listen, you know, um, look, people, people love Carl. There's comedians coming to me and go, Carl's the funniest man. They, they absolutely yeah. love him, right? But I think we're only seeing half of it, right? Mm. Uh, if we can get him on television, his face then, when he's told me that title, was like a child at Christmas. Yeah. It was, it was, he was so proud of it, yeah. he was excited what I was gonna- it was brilliant. It's a bit like when a child's drawn a picture in art class, you've- you know you've got to stick it on the fridge, you've got but a, you basically yeah. think it's crap. Yeah, yeah. It's very much like that. Alright, right, Carl? Carl? Is that good? Yes. So, we'll be doing that. Do we need them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Have you got another one? We have got another one. Looking at, uh, Snails. Oh yeah. Do we yeah. need snails? Do we okay, need snails? Because I know you're not a fan of snails, are you? Well, after a bit of research, I found some good stuff out about, um, like, they sleep for 13 years, some of them. Yeah. And that, so we'll be looking <laughs> Rick, into that later. you tried that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. We've got Ritual. <laughs> ritual. Yeah. Yeah. Which is something that I told last, you about. Yeah, well last week's was brilliant. What it's was good it? to have a flat head in India. <laughs> it's good to have a flat head in India. I That's brilliant. All that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just play one of my favourite Smith tracks. Can I just uh, make a request? Though? I'd quite like if you know if you've got time to bring back um, just for one week only White Van Carl. Sure. Because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's some Carl's things happening. There is. <laughs> there is a light that never goes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Someone's left one of those little things in here. It's brilliant, isn't it's it? It's amazing. What, what are they called, those things? <laughs> I just, I imagine they're just there, I was thinking of being in the front row at a Morrissey concert and going, oh, oh, just, can I just play along? <laughs> <laughs> they are brilliant. I uh, don't know what kind of sound that is. I don't know. I, it's only used for when Kenneth Williams <laughs> yeah, exactly. sees someone undressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only time that yeah. is used, that noise. <laughs> exactly. That is brilliant. But it's like it was specially created for the Carry On films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we need- I don't know what it is, but we need something when I walk in and see someone changing. Well, what about this? <laughs> there is a light that never goes out by the Smiths. Um, I phoned, uh, Carl up in the week, yeah, and, uh, I said, uh, what are you doing? He went, well, even though it's one of my days off, I'm just doing some research on the web. Went to the phone and said, yeah, I'm doing science. And then he said, you can get wigs for dogs in Tokyo. <laughs> That's his scientific fact. Yeah. And I went, 
what do you mean? You, 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 dogs, do they need a wig? I said, if they need a wig, what? Dogs going <laughs> bald? And he went, like, this is fine to him, he went, it's a stressful city, Tokyo. <laughs> the world's all right with Carl. He's always got an explanation. <laughs> I've only ever seen him confused once. When, in Edinburgh, he looked out of his window one day and he saw a bloke putting a parking ticket on some rubbish. Yeah. And that genuinely confused him. Yeah. He couldn't work out, could you? It's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> but, but the and, the babe, and the woman breastfeeding her eight-year-old child, didn't, you didn't like, did you? I don't like that. But, um, the what's the name? Animals with wigs. I kind of thought, after I put the phone down to you, I kind of <laughs> thought about it, thought, yeah, it's a bit daft, that. Are you sure it's not the, the aging pop group? No. The but, animals? But when you think, have you ever seen, like, a bald pet? No. The, the, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Because my mum, um, we had a cat, we used to get through loads of cats because we lived there. <laughs> What do you mean? It's only ten past one. What are you doing? Running a restaurant? We lived on- Oh God, what do you mean? No, we lived on like a main road. Oh yeah. So yeah. we used to get through a lot of them. Dad it was kept their saying, risk. You know, stop wasting money, you know, it's, it's not Stop good. wasting money, not wasting yeah. cats! Right, so, um, anyway, we had this cat that was ill all the time. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> It's just bag of noobs, probably. <laughs> yeah, Melindra! <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified- I'm going to witch house. Wrong. Oh, God, bloody hell. Wrong. Don't, so, don't let me go to the Pilkington. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 for some reason it kept being sick all the time. Like, yeah, <laughs> that is nice, that's definitely nice. So, my mum- Thought, kind of thought, oh, I've had enough of this, and she yeah. shaved it. What? Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Now I know, I know you're not vets in your family, but what correlation did your mum think there was between you being sick and shaving it? Because it kept being sick, and it was a pain to wash because it kept getting. So caught she up. wanted a dry wipe cat. So <laughs> why didn't she just varnish it? <laughs> <laughs> what? It's weird. It's weird so, so, now, so now he's cold and sick. No, but do you, no, not, I mean, not all of it, she left sort of the back half, but sort of from, from its waist, sort of- I love that! Shave it, cos it's sick on itself! Yeah. And, that uh, is it's, it was the weirdest looking thing, I mean, no, normally I like cats, I'm always like giving yours a stroke on the head and that. Yeah. As soon as she did that, it was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Can't thing. touch it, and then- So now it's sick, cold, and hated. Yeah. I love- I-, I Carl. It must have, I mean, other, the other cats must have been taking the mick out of it constantly. It's just making things worse. Did it get, I'm hoping that it got run over and was put out of its misery. No, I think it, I think it got alright, that one. Or is that the, <laughs> yeah, it did get run over. <laughs> <laughs> it did, it, ah! it. Oh, God! <laughs> oh! So. Oh, dear. <laughs> How many cats do you say you've got through? I'd say when I, whilst I was living at home, I mean, it's, it's still on the increase even though I'm not there. <laughs> so, whilst, whilst I was there, probably five. Oh, God! Oh, yeah. and were you upset each time or you just got used to it? It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the elephant man or whatever. Yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, f the, f like the first- Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, then you get used to how people look and you don't- <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna burst. Yeah, I'm gonna, you have to play a record. No, but- Cause I just <laughs> see his face. <laughs> no, but I've got used to it. Shut up. Shut up. Let you down. Gold Rush on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Brilliant. Rick, so I was in, uh, uh, I don't know whether I should tell you this because it might rock you to the very core. Go on. But I was in an Indian restaurant the other night and, uh, I don't, you've not seen the film, have you seen the film Notting Hill? I haven't, no. Right, in the film Notting Hill, have you seen that, Carl? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Do you remember the bit, uh, Julia Roberts plays uh, a movie star, rather like She's Julia the Roberts. most famous, yeah. yeah I know and she's in a restaurant having dinner with, uh, uh, Hugh Grant and she overhears some people in the restaurant slagging her off and saying, oh, you yeah. know, she's a slapper, probably all actors are, all actresses are. And uh, she's sort of stewing on it, and uh, Hugh Grant wants to say something, and she says, "No, I won't. I won't let you." And and then as she's walking out, she goes and says something to them, and of course their faces drop; they can't believe it's her. And anyway, I was in uh, China, in an uh, Indian restaurant the other night, and they were slagging you off, Rick. Mm. Well, they were what they were saying is they were going, "Oh, Ricky Jones. The thing about Ricky Jones is he's just like the character he plays. Right. He's just like David Brent in real life." And I was listening in, and I was thinking, "Well, I want to say something. 
I want to go over and have a word and say, you know, you're, you're partially right. <laughs> but, uh, but I couldn't, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, I didn't know what to say. I, I couldn't, what could I do? I couldn't really go over there and get into a rumble. I want to say, what do you mean that I'm yeah. like him? I, I use his face and his vocal cords, mm. but I mean, I, I can't help that. Uh, but it's that thing as well of, I don't know where they've got this information from. But, uh, no, 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 no. Because no, you're no, not, it's, so it's they're wrong. Well, so it's, 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 yeah, they've received it from somewhere, or they've, they've read it or something. It's, it's just, I, I, but I don't know, I mean, I can't really be annoyed that they're just wrong. But it it's, was very it's, weird. It's like, it, it's like being annoyed at a vicar believing in God. I can't get annoyed with him. Mm. I just don't believe. But because obviously they didn't recognise me, it's rather like you know when they talk about that idea that if you could go to your funeral, what would people yeah. be saying about you? It's yeah. the closest that you could get to that. Were you, that you you can hear what people are saying about your friends. But why don't you um to get around to the go, you go he is yeah. What do you think of the other fella sometimes <laughs> with him? Yeah, that tall fella. He's good, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it's a shame actually because um. On the occasions I do get recognised from minor appearances, um, I'd never get any cool fans. I just get the nerds. I get the real nerdlingers. I don't get, you know, <laughs> beautiful women coming out. You're putting out. them off though. Putting them off. You've got to take what you can. Well. Don't, but you'll have nothing. No, I know, but this girl came up the other day and she said to, hey, are you that guy who's involved with the office? I went, oh, yes I am. She went, my boyfriend loves you. He's over here. And she pointed him out. I was oh. devastated. I thought, I'm in here. Yeah. There was nothing. There was nothing going on. But there was a guy who was in HMV, and he was working with the tea. He'd been working with the till, and he saw me. He said, uh, would you sign this DVD? I went, oh, no problem. He, I said, and I was trying to make conversation. I was trying to be frothy. And I said to him, oh, selling well, is it? And he yeah. went, it is, it is. Although we've had quite a lot of returns. <laughs> I said, well, don't tell me that. I don't know that. What did he mean? That they didn't like and it? I said, I said, what? You, people have been bringing no, it back. No, I think it's he went, glitches. He, went, oh, he said, they've been bringing it back. I said, what was the problem? He said, they didn't really like it. No! Yeah, they, some of them didn't really like it. You can give it back if you don't like yeah, it! No, I mean, I don't know whether they gave him the money back, but certainly that's what he dealt with. That's what he'd encountered. And then I he mean, said, we didn't give the money back, they just wanted to drop it off. What, they didn't even <laughs> want the money yeah, back? Yeah, they just wanted to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't, <laughs> just didn't want it in the house. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't want this rubbish in our house. <laughs> oh, but we still get the money for it, do we? We still get the money. But Brilliant. do you know what I told you that other time? Again, because I'm, pe people don't recognise me, again I was in a record shop, there was a stack of office videos, and this guy went by, and I sort of heard them as they went by, he went, oh, office, yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people like that. I think it's shit, he's mate when I agree. Really? And, uh, and of course again, I was like, what could I do? I couldn't say anything, I couldn't pipe up and go, well that's sort of... Well, I, I, like the, I like these, the fact that you're always hearing these loud vocals. Yeah. It, uh, well, yeah <laughs> it's great. Yeah, What's the chance of that? I, be, that's brilliant. Maybe, well, that, maybe everyone's always slagging it off. But it's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it, but also yeah. because I keep stand, hanging out by stacks of <laughs> office DVDs. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Wearing a t-shirt with a picture of you and me on it. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. What we got to play, Carl? Something that Steve wants. Well actually, um, I must uh, dedicate this to uh, someone who's emailed in. I mentioned earlier that I was going to play some of the Roots, and Joe from Peterborough is very excited about that. So, uh, this is not from the current Roots album, sadly, which I've not fully absorbed yet, and therefore don't feel I can make a decision on which track to play, but maybe that'll come that's a, sort of sometime in the future. That's sort of and thought we put into our... You know, picking music. Exactly. I had these cassettes in my bag from last week. <laughs> sure. Anyway, this is from the album Things Fall Apart. It's The Roots featuring Erica Badu. You got me. Let's play it. It's going to be structured. Set pieces, um, hitting our marks. Do you know what I mean? There'll be time checks, uh, uh, weather checks, quick <laughs> hold out. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're driving, careful on that. <laughs> so do the prizes. Watch check for traffic, like yeah. if it's bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well again, an arbitrary selection of, uh, goodies. What are those politicians doing? <laughs> Was that XFM News? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, what have we got? So we've got, uh, for those that are a fan of the movie Donnie Darko, which a lot of people rave about this year, a sort of weird teenage movie, then, uh, there's a sort of, uh, sweatshirt there. It is actually quite nice. It's not bad at all. It's, uh, it's medium, so if you, if you're a bit of a bloater, mm. don't bother to apply, unless you've got a friend already. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we've also got here, um, a Graham Norton video, Certificate 18. Oh, that's <laughs> so, that was... please don't phone up unless, or, sorry, don't email in unless you're above the age of 18. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, the best of his TV show. Yeah. Look forward to that. It's um, a big stiff video, that, isn't it? It's a big <laughs> stiff <laughs> cock of a video. <laughs> Thanks oh, very much. I meant you the- say, yeah, yeah, you meant the bird. Yeah. Um, there's also a fairly mediocre British wartime thriller, Enigma, um, which a lot of people, it was hyped for a while, but it's actually interminable, I've seen it. <laughs> um, the, uh, first series here of The Kumars at number 42 on DVD, uh, I think that's award winning, so, uh, that's available as well. We've got two CDs by the look of it. We've got, uh, Pulp's Greatest Hits, which I don't think sold very well, and so presumably they are giving that away. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Johnny Cash's um, current uh, album, uh, American for the Man Comes Around, there's some good cover versions there. Again, another big sell. A big yeah. sell. We're really pushing um, this. But it, it, yeah, it's a quite kooky. Uh, Johnny Cash here does covers of things including Personal Jesus. Oh, all right. By Depeche Mode. Uh, we've got Bridge Over Troubled Water, his version of that. <laughs> Desperado. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it's, it's not bad. That's probably the best treat in that bunch. And, right. Um, I'm assuming there's some questions there, Carl. Yeah, yeah. Right, here we uh, go. If you're a new listener, the way it works, I'll give you a cryptic clue and some wow. initials, and it sort of makes up a band. Yeah. Um, makes more sense when you hear it, I reckon. Not particularly. Well, not really. Although so, people do get it. I yeah. just worry about the. The state of our listeners. Go on. <laughs> right, so there's three of them. You email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. It's email one. only. I email repeat, only. it is email only. We, we are have too that lazy <laughs> to answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right. here we go then. Number one. Um, there's, there's normally two easy ones and a difficult one. Sure. So here we go. Uh, number one. Don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. Don't argue with him. He ain't gonna change his mind. Yeah, that's AA. A.A. That's, yeah. So that's it's the first one. He's not gonna change his mind. Um. What do you mean, um? Just, just, just got them written out, have Yeah, you? I'm just thinking about what the answer is, so I don't write the answer down to Oh, for God. Don't <laughs> worry, they get it. <laughs> yeah, don't well, worry. Um, what do you, yeah. well, you can't remember it? You came up with it, there's only three. I know, I know, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's not weird, it's incompetent. <laughs> right, the second one, anyway, <laughs> I hope you get this. Um. <laughs> I hope you get this. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And tell us the answer. This is a shambles. Hang on a Come minute. On, Go on. on. He always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. <laughs> and you don't know. You don't know that is. It'll, I'm sure it'll come to me once I see it on email. If, uh, what do you mean? It, once they get it, you'll agree with them. I'll know if it's the one I had down as the answer. This is brilliant. Come Imagine on, Jeremy the... Paxman doing Amazing. that. Going, yeah, University what, Times. Is that right? <laughs> Go on. Right, so uh, that's give that us, one. Give us that one again. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. P. But you're confused. I don't understand how you can be confused. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's the final third, one? The third one, uh, one, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. And that's A, B. Alright, quickly give us them again. Right, so the first one, don't argue with him, he ain't, he ain't gonna change his mind. That's A, A. Um, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P. And, um, I'll have to put that woman in the oven. A, B. All right. Okay. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm gonna play a classic track now by, uh, Neil Young, Alabama. It's oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Neil Young, Alabama. Uh, Carl is still confused. He's waiting. He's biting his fingers, waiting for an email to tell him the answer to the clue he made up but can't get. <laughs> I love that as an experiment. As a psych- I mean, that would confuse psychologists that you come up with something that you can't get. It's brilliant. Yeah, you came up with the question. You don't know the answer. And you expect them to, but you can't and you made it up. Look at your face. That confi- Play some adverts. Honestly, Juan by uh, Billy Corgan's new band there. Um, X Smashing Pumpkins. Mm -hmm. Sounds a bit like them, but yeah. I like it. It's alright, not bad. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I like we would seem to know, Rick, incidentally, cool. that someone's got the right answer. So, uh, Carl's Carl really knows the answer, yeah. Brilliant. Well done, <laughs> Carl. You're a fool. <laughs> right. Well, well, um,. Talking of which, <laughs> it's a long time since we've had any white van Carl. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Uh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium which was incredibly vague but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying... Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, enough's enough. <laughs> ah! Oh, but I'll tell you what though, talking, about, talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well, it's not true. Before you say it, <laughs> play a record. No, go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman. <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost, really. It's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah, sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's 
Well, she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> okay. She's, sure. She's walking down, like, a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down, and a woman comes up, cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid, absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About... Fifteen years later, oh right, yeah. She's, I don't know. I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She's riding her own bike, riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened like fifteen, twenty years ago. Right. It's her on the bike, looking at her as a kid. Right. What not 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 another child. No. So right. it's her. She's seen well, herself. Uh, what, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. Don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, what, why do you ever? Con I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I I don't. I, I I'm honest. I'm oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird, though, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not true. It didn't happen. Nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she carry and, on uh, riding And as an adult when she was a kid. <laughs> did she stop and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think, that's a bit weird, there's me as an eight-year-old. <sighs> I won't stop, I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, and where is this information? Was it, did it happen to someone you know? No. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the 14 times. Ah, oh, right. Well, ah, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's, he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. All right. <laughs> next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because <laughs> I'll tell you this: they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the houses of parliament. Uh, uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah, my <laughs> fellow is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, and it like cowboys and Indians. They didn't have playstations and two pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean in the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's you know that's the world, and it? it's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's, he's sort of right in a way, in his in his innocence, in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like, you know, dinosaurs. Look at them. They they caused a lot. And of then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah, <laughs> sound like a fool again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened. It always will. Yeah. Don't you know? Don't try and change it. Yeah. yeah. Just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know? Uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're little and go, be careful what you do in life. <laughs> Oasis, Supersonic, still good. Still as it? good as ever. Still good on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has uh, emailed him. Dickers! Dickers, Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's, uh, he's probably our uh, biggest fan. Um, Diddler, you little diddler. <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in, as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> That's from, uh, from Randers, from Randy Anders. Little diddle dummers! <laughs> Oh. So, uh, thanks again, uh, um, Dudley. Yeah. Uh, well done. He's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a there. buzz. I, I, I was disappointed last week where he didn't, what, what ask him why he's, uh, didn't email did, he didn't, us last He didn't respond last week. No, it's a shame. Probably yeah. busy. I mm. don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't believe that of anyone. No. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> no, you've got Saturday this sort afternoon. of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. What have you done this, uh, week, Carl? Well, I've had a, uh, got a few days off, haven't I? Yeah. Still, you know, doing stuff for this show and that, but <laughs> managed to get a few really. hours in. Yeah, uh, not really. Just, just doing, doing nothing and, uh, bought a place. I was, I was looking at kitchens. Yeah. Weighing some of them up. And, yeah. uh. Checking them out. Checking them out. And, uh, also ordered a sofa. Yeah. Nice sort of comfy sort of le leatherish mm -hmm. sofa. Oh, a leatherish. Oh, I don't, I don't like leather sofas. I don't, no, I don't... But, yeah, but what are you picturing? 
a leather um, sofa. A leather sofa. Yeah, I just don't, I it's squeaky and it's no. Uh, this isn't. This isn't, isn't it? No, this isn't like that. But I want. I want a really old, sinky, yeah. dented fabric. I want. That's I want a sofa that is as comfortable as a bed. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, if it was acceptable, you'd have a bed in your lounge. <laughs> <wouldn't> <laughs> yeah. If that was allowed, yeah. without seeming <laughs> like you were sort of like elderly. <laughs> That would be good, and I'd have I'd have a drip going in, yeah, sort of like with nutrients. Because now I, I can't be bothered to chew. Now. No, you can't, lager, yeah. sort of lager with sort of uh, uh, vitamins. Vitamins, and then in, yeah. and then one going from the knob down to the toilet to the lower trim, uh, yeah. and with all the remote controls. And mm. I, I that would be amazing. To be fair, you're almost there, Rick. <laughs> I've <laughs> yeah. certainly seen the toilet tubing. <laughs> and I've been <laughs> round in the past. <laughs> my dad's bed, right? My dad would never change his chair. My mum would try and get rid of it because it it would just fit to him, and it'd just be absolutely. Dilapidated, right? And what, he's, like, he's got, he had like his own chair in the lane. Yeah, his yeah. own chair, right? And then, uh, uh, and his bed, right? When, uh, they had separate rooms towards the end. Um, and his bed, right? It was just, it had it for years. And it was a big dip. It really? was just like a spoon in the middle where it's just, it was concaved. Where it's like, wow. And my mum <laughs> used to just vacuum it out. Oh! Where all the little bits are like, you know, he'd have a fag in bed or he'd do his roll ups in bed. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, that's he grotesque. Said, what? Why do you like that bed? It's curved. You, you, you know, he goes, he goes, it means I can't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was like <laughs> in a hammer. <laughs> that's great. That could have been good for his back. Well, I don't think it mattered towards the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. A, a hammock would be, I, I, I really yeah. would love a, a hammock. I think a big bean bag would be good, wouldn't it? With a telly. A, a bean bag as big as a bed would be amazing. Yeah, but this is still the telly thing, because uh, do you, Prop yourself up a little bit to watch it. Do you watch it on the side, which is annoying? Do you turn the telly on the side? That's always- I've always wondered about that. The weird- the weird thing is, right, you know, I've mentioned before about certain things that are just right, like your hand, five fingers is- is just enough, <laughs> right? One more- The sex tips. It ruins stuff. Yeah, well, one less. One less than you- you know, I was saying about drying your pots and that, it'd be really slippery and that. Yeah. Right? And the weird <laughs> thing is, right, I think bed, that's nat what nature had in, in <laughs> mind. No, but yeah. like, like, um, my mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And, uh, they had this double bed. And that was for like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed, yeah. yeah. but because the, the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, he just sliced some off. Like a big sandwich, just c cut just, a bit off Just cut, cut the crust how, off. How, how much is that, would you say? But. Eight inches, six About eight inches. inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. Because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He it'll just collapse. It, it, didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed. <laughs> but but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is- this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he- why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring- putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And That's there was amazing. just, presumably there was just kind of, what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh, with the legs? Did he have to move the legs in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the, the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was like, sure. yeah, that's alright, done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night, he's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. And you goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> not I said right it's not that. right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said that, and there was a big kerfuffle. My man was saying, look, you have our bed then, and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. You know. <laughs> some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep, and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you, like, every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six months. Can, I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, I mean, Channel 4 or something. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The Pilkingtons. Yeah, 
Uh, be, that, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Ho <laughs> ho That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or and, Bravo? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you wanna play, do you wanna play, uh, do you fancy playing something of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you maybe? Oh yeah, no, I'll tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this. Yeah, Bronze Age Fox. Uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the Carl, the always working, he's always working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. Coldplay, the scientist, X-Men 104.9, I'm Richard Mason, this is Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkers, and Carl, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's how you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> right, what are you doing then? Uh, let's have a quick uh, reprise, if we could, of the uh, of the Rockbusters clues. Yeah, Rockbusters. If you've just tuned in, you've missed it this week. Uh, if you're well, no, you clues. haven't. That's why we're giving the clues again. Yeah, no, but if they haven't, hey, what? Yeah, say if they've been busy. Just, just give the clues again. <laughs> um, oh first one, God! Um, don't argue with him because he, he isn't going to change his mind. That's A A. <laughs> <coughs> Second one, um, he always gets what he uh, he always gets what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. That's P, yeah. And the third and final one, oh, I might have to put that woman in the oven. A B. Interesting. Are we telling him or still? No, no, no. no the, the, yeah. People have still got a chance to win those extraordinary prizes. Ricky Gervais at XFM dot co dot uk. We've still got only. features to come though, Steve. It's incredible. We've still got Ritual. Got where, like, remember last time? People in India, it's good to have a flat head. <laughs> yeah. We've got Do We Need em. I've got That's Ridiculous. That's a great game. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We, uh, get Do We Need em out of the way. Let's get Do We Need em out of the way. Yeah, just, uh, let's, again. let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, Do We Need em all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. Just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. So snails in general. Um, I don't know a bit much about snails, land snails, I know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a, a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. They glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently, a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones. Mm. But that, that's a problem they're causing. All oh, right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. I well, didn't know that. get you glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're, they're, they do quite a good job in the sea. They have, um, graze on algae and there. But, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal. Why do they? Why do they exist? W would you be know. upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal. You know, I wouldn't forget being like favoritism and all that. I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around. You can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job. Don't be worrying about that. Because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, 
that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know, what do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, 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 was, I think that sounds a bit... I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got a, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoyed. I know. What, what, did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the them. the thing is, right, I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe because he could look after jellyfish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I... getting livid, you could oh, tell. Oh, God. Brilliant. So he's oh. been around a long time, but what have they done? <laughs> well, they done? that was great, Carl. Play a record. <laughs> oh, well done. Bit of, uh, bit of Amy Man. Oh, I'm obsessed with this song, Red Vines. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I love that. Amy Man, Red Vines, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our, um, regular email from, uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy Sam. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned it, because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain, uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in, uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh... That's from Rounders. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> he's, he's explained himself. Oh, he's dear. excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Right. Okay, Carl. That's ridiculous. Three amazing scientific facts, one of which is spurious. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. One. Um, girls can't throw because the part of their brain that allow men to throw properly in a girl is used up in emotion. Two. Gravity isn't instantaneous, it works at the speed of light, the force of gravity. Three, statistically, you're more likely to be trampled by a donkey than dying in a plane crash. No, uh, even though the last one sounds daft, I think I, I've read that, about the donkey thing. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, girls... What's the first one? The, the Girl, girls can't throw properly because the part of the brain <coughs> that allow men to throw is yeah, used up in yeah, emotion yeah, in a woman. Yeah. Gravity in, isn't instantaneous. It, it works at the speed of light. So when you drop some, it, the force kicks in at the speed of light. What do you reckon, Steve? Well, it's well, not for me to say. Is this a trick one where none of them are ridiculous? Or one no, of one, of them's, one, one, of, one of those three... One of those three is not true. Right, well, it's definitely not the donkey, right? So... Uh, I reckon the, uh, the girl one, throwing stuff. Is ridiculous. Yeah. Correct. Well done. Well Very done. Very well done indeed. Yeah. Very well done indeed. That's two out of two he's got so far. Well, there you yeah. go. Well, yeah. well, I'll teach you some stuff now. <laughs> right? I've, so I just say, I've always been fascinated by the, uh, the donkey fact, because it is an extraordinary fact that more people are killed apparently by donkeys. Yeah. Than they are by airplane crashes. Well, I suppose in countries where they're used, and, yeah. you know, used a lot, that, you know, they, um, they go a bit mad and squash but, out. But my concern is that <coughs> there's, when you go on a plane, there's so many checks. I mean, it takes them 40 minutes to go through all the checks, the air pressure, the cabin pressure, the fuel, yeah. checking the, you know, flights, the take off, all the rest of it. Our checks for donkeys. Nothing. Did someone close the gate? I think so. Exactly, That's yeah. it, that's our, that's is our he donkey annoyed? checks. Is he annoyed or not? <laughs> yeah. You're not working him too hard, are you? Yeah, yeah. He's got his hand. Is there two, is there two holes for the ears? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think that's what's happening. I don't think it's accident. I think they're picking us off. I think they're yeah. so annoyed that a nickname for them is ass. Yeah. And they've got to wear the little hand 
that, you know, they, they get, they've got ride kids, you know, give kids rides on the beach and that. I think they're just sort of annoyed. Yeah. Maybe they're sort of just picking us off one by one. Yeah. Teaching us a lesson. Not, if we had the same stringent checks <laughs> exactly. on donkeys as we do on f international flights, maybe exactly. there'd be a little less death. <laughs> exactly. Wise words. <laughs> Cheers. Wise, <laughs> if slightly incoherent <laughs> words. <laughs> so, Go on, Carl. Got that right. Um, so, um, <laughs> acid. I would sort you out with some science. Brilliant. I forgot the puns in mind, didn't I? I forgot the puns. Yeah. Go on. Right, so, um, yeah, you asked to sort of be taught some science and that last week after being taught about war, so, yeah. uh, did some research. <laughs> and, um, there's a few things, I think we'll just cover, cover one of them now. Go on. Um, we've talked a lot about airy kids. <laughs> <laughs> we have discussed that I love that a lot. the fact that Simon Sharma has never started a programme <laughs> no. like that. Uh, the, the Jacobites. We've talked a lot about hairy kids. <laughs> Go well, on. It's, it's a little bit, I mean, it's not your traditional science stuff, but sure. it's still well, interesting still. and it's a little bit, you know, it's still Yeah, we've talked about hairy kids. We have, we have disproportionately, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I think this show's talked about hairy kids more than any other radio yeah. show. Well, it's, it's one that- Sorry, I noticed uh, both of you there dropped the H, or the H, or however it's called. I had to. So, it, airy, airy we kids, yeah. hairy, yeah. hairy children, not yeah. um, yeah. sort of airy, kind of light-headed or- Yeah. Well, there was, there was the case of the, uh, <laughs> the one who lived in China. Yeah. And, uh- Which was weird for two reasons, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, go on. Uh, one was like, he was covered in air. That's already weird. And yeah. the doctor sort of checked him over and said, well, yeah, he is airy, but he's quite healthy apart from, he had a little bit of eczema and hmm. a boil. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that was the main bit of the story, wasn't it? Yeah. But this one, right, we all sort of talked about it, and, uh, you weren't having any of it at the time. What? This, this next bit of science I'm telling you about. Go on, on then. Right? Um, remember when I told you about a lad, he was living at home with his mum and dad, right, everything's, you know, normal life, go out of school, that sort of thing. Yeah. Then, I think his mum and dad had an argument, and it kicked off a bit and he thought, I'm sick of this, it's happening all the time now, they kept having arguments, so the kid, Ran off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Right. God. Now he he left. He went and ran in the woods, and he ended up living with some monkeys. Right. <laughs> right. And he thought this isn't a bad life. You know, there's no arguments going on. Sure. He was getting on with them. Um, <laughs> and the weird he loved thing bananas. is, this <laughs> this is where the science bit comes in. Oh, sure. He grew a load of air on his body. That's not true. It's not true. It is true. It's an acquired characteristic. It's, it, 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 I bet someone will back me up on this. But th no, no, you can't, you, you can't grow hair like that. You might get a little bit uh, more downy, or they might, uh, the erectile tissue might, uh, you know, they won't fall out as much that would, you know. But you don't actually grow a big mane if well, you're cold and you're a human. Well, he did. He did. This lad did. I know it sounds a bit strange in that, but he, he was living with the monkeys, um, <laughs> and because it was cold, his body reacted listen, to Listen, listen. He was no hairier than he would have been if he was walking around naked on a cold day, with or without living with monkeys. The it, fact that he was living with monkeys makes no difference. No, I know, but I'm trying to get, you know, picture it in your head what it's like. Although Mickey Dolenz was always pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, he was living with them, and, um, he went into town or something one day. Oh, yeah. To get some food, <laughs> and the people there were like, hang on a minute, that isn't a monkey. Mm. Um, well, he, went, he went in naked. <laughs> no, he was there covered in hair. Yeah. yeah, but naked, but covered in hair. So it was decent. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they, that was a weird thing. They thought it was a monkey in the shop. And then <laughs> so went, presumably he had a big long beard as well because he couldn't shave, could he? No, no, he just covered. He looked like a monkey. And they were happy to serve the monkey, <laughs> were they? There's a the monkey. He's How did he walk? How did he milk. walk? How did he walk, Carl? Did he walk start upright or? Whistling along. The, just pi the picture that I saw on the internet, he was on all fours, but I don't know was. if that's when he was running he was. away after he did, did sort of, you know, realised he was a kid. But this was a picture. So he was a kid as well. He wasn't even like an adult with the beard. No, he was a kid. Brilliant, brilliant. And the the beard went, kicked in a little bit. So early, listen. So the Go people on. caught him. You're an idiot. The people caught him. Yeah. Shaved him. Right. Got it all off. Didn't grow back again. Right. It just. It You're grew. an idiot. Well, like I say, people will have heard this story or read about it, you're and, an they'll, idiot. and they'll email in. They don't let me down, and they'll agree that you're an and idiot. The, no, no, they'll they'll have seen the story. You're an idiot. So that's a little bit of science. <laughs> you're an idiot. Did you see the stylish kids in the riot? Yeah, I 
Libertines, Time for Heroes and XFM 104.9. Right, okay, so have you got anything that is science as opposed to nonsense? Well, um... Kid went off with some monkeys, grew air, yeah. came back, shaved him, it didn't grow back. I mean, just think. Right, something else? Um, there's a few things I found. Yeah. Um, there's a fella... Oh, God. Uh, who had hiccups for 69 years. <laughs> Oh, that was a bit annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've discussed. <laughs> uh, Imagine if you just tuned in. <laughs> yeah. There's the dog with the wig that we've already discussed. Uh, did we discuss that? that? Not really. Did I not tell you what he said? I did, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what else have I got? Well, there's something here that you sort of know. Is this going out live? Yeah, the this is happening. Right? right, go on. But remember when you talked about, um, Sponges. Yeah. If you get a red sponge and a blue sponge. You liquidise them, pour them back into a tank, after a few hours that they know which was which and they, they reform as a red sponge and a, and a blue sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was weird when you told me. Yeah. Looked it up, did a bit of research. Yeah. Thought that's sort of sciencey. Yeah. Um, you can do the same thing with a mouse's brain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain a bit more. No, you can't. Uh, if, if you get a dead mouse. Yeah. Um, put its brain into a blender, you know, blend it up, um, leave it standing for a bit. Making that up, aren't you? You get, you're confusing this, you watch Nigella Lawson make some sort of pudding. No, <laughs> no. What do you mean, what, do you, wait, it, it, wait, it won't work with the brain? Well, it, it does with a, I mean, not, not human brain, don't be trying although, that. But, although... No, a mouse, a mouse one. <laughs> a mouse one. And what happens? It sort of reforms, goes back together again. No, it's, it's, you know, because apparently it's made up of the same stuff as. But it doesn't, does it? Because if it's dead, if it's a if it's a dead brain, the cells can't act anyway. The fact the sponge is that it doesn't kill the cells; it liquidizes them. It doesn't kill the cells, yeah. so it couldn't be a dead brain anyway. It would have to be a live brain taken out from a live mouse for the cells to be getting oxygen and working and and being sensitive to each other. And that uh, I, I don't see how that could work like it does in sponges. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, do you know what I mean? You're not a scientist. I, I've sure. just sort of read it and yeah. gone, oh, that's, that's interesting, I'll tell Ricky and Steve about it. Yeah, yeah. You're quizzing me as it. if I've come up with it. No. It's someone else has done it and said yeah. it works. Mm. Sure. So I'm not- Do you think- not, do you think ghosts are behind it or do you think there's a scientific explanation for it? No, it's just, uh, it's just one of them weird things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's what you sort of science covered yeah. for this yeah. one. Well, that was another barnstorming feature. <laughs> 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 is that it? Is that the two things you got this week? Thanks very much for that. Well, that yeah, yeah, that, I mean, is there's, they're there's the nothing that, behind them. Do you know what I mean by this? There's not a, there's not like a weight of intellect behind these facts. Why don't it? you make that your science project for this week? Find a dead mouse somewhere, Carl, and a blender, <laughs> and we'll bring that in next week. We'll do it live on air and see what happens. <laughs> oh. Well. Do you feel sort of let down a little bit sometimes with our reactions? Well, what I are you expecting us to do? What, are you expecting us to just like look at you, open mouthed, staring at you in awe? Just like, oh God, yeah. Where did you find that out? And like, yeah, but you we know, ask, we you know. Tell us. We know where you found it out. You looked on the internet, and a strange homemade website by a maniac somewhere uh, who puts on stupid things that he heard through Chinese whispers. It's that's where you get your information from. I, I doubt that anything you've ever come up with is is verified. If it is, it's luck. But what what do you expect me to? <laughs> do for you. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just- <coughs> You know, I'd like to know what the source of the information is. I'd like it to be, you know, a research study by the University of Columbia, rather than, you know, a guy who calls himself Mr. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> on a website somewhere, <laughs> www.lunatics.com. <laughs> I mean, oh god. Something, some kind of evidence, do you know what I mean? I'll go, I must warn you now, you know that Steven Spielberg thing's coming, Taken, yeah? About alien abduction. When you watch it, just remember this, it's not a documentary. Okay? Alright. Alright? You remember our E.T., we were yeah. discussing that earlier, you know that's not fact. <laughs> fact or fact.
Brilliant. Black Star Radiohead from the Benz on XFM 104.9. Rick, John has emailed in. Yes. It looks here like he's maybe trawled the web himself. I mean, I don't know if people just immediately leap onto the web every time Carl says something in, 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 in his defence. I think our listeners are always on the web. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, he seems like he's reprinted here a news story, which seems to confirm Carl's monkey boy story. Yeah, what was the news Doctor's story? Doctor's baffled by boy six covered in ape-like hair. Doctors in Kazakhstan are baffled after finding a six-year-old boy covered in ape-like hair. Yeah. The boy, called Able, was found in a remote mountain village close to the Chinese border. He's covered in thick hair from head to toe and has an oval-shaped skull. Doctors suspect nuclear radiation or a genetic disorder may be responsible. Fine. Um, but it's an interesting bit But, but sorry, it's not that you could have genetic defects. I've seen lots of people born with, um, long noses, five feet, etc. I'm saying You've that he wasn't Bristol, normal. <laughs> he, w he wasn't normal and then went to live with, um, monkeys and grew the hair. <laughs> well, that's, that's my true. point. But it says his mother and father are distant relatives. Such marriages are common in the Kazakhstan mountain hamlets. Now, uh, the village elders were consulted as to what to do with him, right? Now, these are the village elders. These are the, these are the wise men of the village. These are the people, presumably, that all year long are telling the, the village how to live, how to survive. Yeah, you're in charge because you've lived longest. You're, yeah, exactly. You're presumably solving any kind of moral conundrums, yeah. any sort of awkward things. Do you know what they suggested that they do with their hairy son? Go on. Send him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> the cow's nodding. Put him in the circus. <laughs> that was what they suggested, and uh, the mother actually wanted him to go to school. Um, Instead of the circus. I don't know, school or circus, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know what's better for him. <laughs> exactly. I'm not sure. <laughs> we must consult the elders. What do you think, Carl? Uh, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> what, the circus? Yeah. Well, you ran away from it. it. Yeah. Love it. But remember that thing that I saw about that fella who, uh, I don't know if you should talk about it really, it's Go on. Tell us now. You've hooked me. Come on. You can say it. It's okay. What, are you worried that it might be insulting to someone? Well, it's not, it's not nice, but... It, well, you're you not taking the mickey out of it. You're telling us... Go on. It's just, it was in that book again that you got me. You know, the book full of weird people. Go and, on. And things that are wrong with them and airy people and... Yeah. Like with three legs and that. There was a fella. Mm. Um, basically just a head and, uh, and a little body on a skateboard. <laughs> yeah. All right? Picture of him having a shave. And he was shaving with his, with his mouth bit, like uh, that. With his tongue? Like that on the radio. Yeah. Just like Carl with no an impression of a man shaving with his mouth. Yeah. Well, it's just a head, bear in mind. He's doing an impression. Imagine a head <laughs> with a very tiny body on a skateboard shaving with its tongue. That's what Carl was doing. Oh, uh, and he was depressed because he kept getting hats for Christmas. <laughs> but, but, but if you were him, you would just grow a beard, wouldn't you, rather than... <laughs> Oh, Why? Well, rather than go through all but that hassle. But the wheels of his skateboard. It's <laughs> what he wants and doesn't worry about anyone else. Uh, that was P. Uh, that was Picks His. <laughs> picks His. Picks His. It kind of works, yeah. <laughs> and the uh, third one. I'll oh, right, to, I'll let uh, you have that one. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to put that woman in an oven. That was AB. That was Anita Baker. <laughs> Anita Baker. <laughs> it's good. Anita Baker. Anita yeah, Baker. I'll let you have all three today. So, uh, You've done well. So, do you want to pick a winner, Steve? Well done to Mark Ledder from Bo. He wins those fairly mediocre prizes. <laughs> 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 Enjoy them. Oh, that. brilliant. Oh, well, we've had a few laughs. A few we've had a few laughs, a few tears, a few scientific breakthroughs. <laughs> exactly. Um, Gotta get a picture of Carl somewhere in the national press. Just his little round head there. Add an email here. Carl is trying to distract attention from the fact that he is a monkey raised among humans and horses and has failed to develop hair. It's- uh, I, I can just imagine him yeah. being the second cleverest in a troop of monkeys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Second cleverest. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, uh, it- 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 Picking fleas out of their hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his little face. I'll tell you what. Pete, I'm gonna get a- I'm gonna get a picture of you. Just put it in the radio section of Pete. Just- this is what Carl looks like. Oh, another email. Someone said, um, when the monkey boy went to the shops, he was naked. Where did he keep his money? <laughs> Good point. It didn't happen then. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that's that. We didn't even do all, all, uh... What do you we mean? Get, we didn't get round to ritual. Oh, come on. Give no, us ritual. We, really we have- quickly, quickly! No, it's We have got time! Just do it! Why haven't we got time? It's ten-two! Right. Well, we've got a long track to finish on. Well, just do it. It's- Do are, it! Are you familiar with the place called, uh... <laughs> Go on. Easter Island. Yes. yes. Yeah. Do you know what they do out there? Uh, eat eggs. I right. don't know. Well, Go that's on. that's close. Go on. Right. What they do, right, there's, uh, there's a lot of people living on an island. Yeah. Easter Island? And <laughs> to find out who's gonna be running the place, <laughs> 
They, um... <laughs> they don't hold elections, do they? They have these, well, they have these birds that lay, like, expensive eggs on a, on an island. Expensive eggs! Yeah. They lay expensive eggs! Fabergé eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. On this island. Yeah. Uh, Easter once Island? Once a year, once a year. No, off, off it, like, oh, about, yeah. about two miles out. Right? Oh, yeah. And Whitson Island. And the sea, yeah. the sea. Shrew <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, back to Shrew Tuesday. Just tell us! No, 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 you, no, 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 tell us! Right, finish next it now. Week, you, week. Don't you dare! Oh, I'll I'll see you later. Right. Johnny Mitchell. You've Blue Motel Room from the album oh, Nigeria. It's a song for ladies this week. Thanks for listening. Next week we'll be Easter Island. The Flaming Lips. Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots mm -hmm. on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to own up straight away. I've done very little work towards this show this week. I'm a bit <laughs> you busy. surprised me. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I apologise if it sounds a bit sort of. Thanks for being honest, though. Well, Rick. no, I don't, you know, I don't want people to go, oh, no, that was a bit shoddy this week. I hope it's not going to be that every week. Yeah. So it is because I've done very little preparation. <laughs> okay. So. Right. You know, you Whereas probably, normally. You'll probably have to help me out. All right. You have to do some of the some of the work. Carl, you might have to help us out a little bit as well. I don't know, but I mean. Because I know Steve's done nothing towards it either. So. The onus is on you a little bit here. I love the fact that it's still listed as either Ricky Gervais or Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant. Mm. In the, you know. Essentially, we don't need to be here, really. No, it, but I know now people listen for Carl. Mm. Uh, everyone I've spoken to, for you know, people on buses to uh, comedians like Ross Noble mentioned you the other day, and that you know, it, it, they go. Uh, people on buses. I've never been on a bus. You for haven't years. been on a bus no. for like twelve years. Yeah. Have you? I know, <laughs> people I on buses. <laughs> 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 I don't know why I find that so funny. I just know well, the they, idea no. of you being on a bus. Well, the idea of you well, handing over your the bus. They're shouting out from the window. Right. They're going, I love Carl. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, just, I'm walking along. How much is it on the bus? 20 pence. <laughs> no, come on, seriously, how much is it? Uh, um, what, one, one adult for terminus, please. <laughs> I love the fact, you know, they do that thing where, like, if they're interviewing kind what of is it? Paul 50, Newman or someone pin? famous. No, uh, it's a quid, isn't it? It's a quid. Say, they always say, how much is a pint of milk? And that's supposed to prove if you're sort of still in touch with your roots or whether you're too big a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. You've got no idea how much it costs on the bus. Quid. It's not a quid. 120. No, it's not 120. Pint of milk, about 50p. <laughs> 30p. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, well cuz I mean it's fascinating cuz you gave this stuff I mean you gave this stuff up before you became a celebrity didn't what? you you were you were always lazy cuz people always say to me like oh um you know Ricky seems a bit obnoxious who know. says that? Well, no, they say, you know, no, only, no. Who comes up to you and just says that? The guy on the tube did it. <laughs> I swear to God, he came up, he said, uh, he said, I was watching an interview with Ricky, he said, see, he's not a nice piece of work. I went, well, I mean, he said, no, nah, I've got friends like that. You know, just, and it's like, they're always talking, they're a bit irritating, you know, and you sort of let them off because they're your mates. But I was going, well, hang on a minute, he went, well, no, well, well two things, you know, it's sort of my job talking, and mm. being interviewed, essentially you do have to talk. <laughs> yeah, so yeah about yourself. If that's his only criticism, then yeah. I'm not too bad. No, he didn't think you were funny either. So. <laughs> He had a, in fact, he had a whole list. <laughs> well, well I say a list, a it, petition. It wasn't Dickie Anderson, was it? <laughs> it wasn't Rich Richard Anderson. I hope he's listening. He's our biggest fan. I'll tell you what, Mock Turtles need a remix by Fatboy Slim, don't they? Mock Turtles? It's yeah. a great tune, but I'd love to hear it remixed. Yeah. Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It? Remixed by Slim. Yeah. Yeah, XFM 104.9 on Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant, mm -hmm. Carl Pilkington. Ooh, <laughs> stuff, oh, stuff to dear, do, what's going on? stuff to happening? talk about and that. What's been, oh, going uh, what's been going on? Oh, um, before you came in, oh, you saw it, didn't you? That experiment I was doing with the. <laughs> <laughs> An experiment. Yeah. Well, I, all I know is as I walked in the building, I passed the little kitchen area. You were hitting Carl on the head with a tin tray. Didn't it make a good noise? It was a great noise. Um, but I'm interested, explain more about the experiment. Well, I wanted, to, I wanted to see how hard I could hit him and make it resonate, right, before I either caved his skull in, or, right. you know what I mean? So, you had to hold it quite loose, okay. so it could, like, vibrate, but you had to grip it hard enough to give it a good whack. Right. And his head's brilliant for hitting stuff on. <laughs> is it? It is perfect. Cause Carl, it's like could we recreate that moment a bit later on the radio? You'll notice that you've been on for 15 minutes, haven't said a word. So it's had a bit of an effect on me. <laughs> still, still a little bit shaken. Okay. <laughs> oh uh, dear. But yeah, do it again later. We right. were talking about your head a little bit earlier, weren't we? It's not going to mean that you're sort of a bit, you know, fuzzy thinking, is it? Ah, uh, it'll be all right. Yeah. Okay, so, good. can we I recreate that later, maybe I towards the end of the show? Just hit you on the head with various objects, see which make the best sound. 
He said, well, he said, well, he said, talking about time out. I said, but something about in time out. And he went, ah, oh, yeah, do you read that? I went, yeah, yeah, I read it, I get it every week, yeah. He went, ah, oh, there's no point though, is it? He said, because it's like a telephone directory. You know, if you want to look something up, you look it up, but you'd never sort of browse the telephone directory. And I went, that's an interesting point. He went, although I did. <laughs> When I was in Scotland, I just looked up how many Macs there were and there was 42 pages of them. <laughs> how bored are you in your hotel room in Scotland to suddenly start working out how many people start with Mac? Did you- were you sat in your room? You, there is nothing else that you can I, think I of I've to do. I've been working. It's when we did the show from, you know, XFM did some stuff from Edinburgh. Yeah. You, you were sat in your hotel room? Sat in the room, waiting to sort of go out and get some food and that. Sat there. Why were you waiting to go out and get some food? Because we're, we're going all going to meet up. We're going to meet up with, you know, with Simon. So you, you thought, right. I'm not going to switch the TV on. I'm not going to read a the magazine. The telly was on. Nothing was on. I wasn't impressed with anything that was on. So I'm looking <laughs> around the room. I had a couple of the free shortbreads. <laughs> 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 He remembers. Yeah. He remembers. He remembers a specific biscuit he yeah. had. Yeah. That's fantastic. I had a couple of them, and then um, looked around. There was a bible, and I thought, well, I know about that. Yeah. There's nothing in that I don't know. So, got the phone book up, and I immediately thought, there's a lot of Mac this and Mac that in Scotland. Macintosh. Yeah. Mac Daddies. Macateer. Yeah. There's loads Return of names. So I thought, I wonder how popular it is. Um, <laughs> I wonder just how popular it is. Forty-two pages of Max. Did you count how many pages there were? Yeah. Did and you then, did you just work out from the numbers on the bottom of the page, or did you literally no, I count counted, them? I counted. Right. And, uh, and how many do you reckon are on a page? There's a lot in there. If quite someone a lot, could tell you uh, approximately how many and, sorry, names I, what, they get on one page. How long did it take you this whole procedure? What, what? Ca the counting? Not, yeah. not that long. No, it's, it's just, just counting two pages. pages. Yeah. So yeah. It's not yeah. that much. They're all together, luckily. And what did you luckily. do once you digested that information? What, what did you do with that information? Did you I tell people? It, I, I mean, look, how long ago was the Edinburgh Festival? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Along with the biscuit, I love to get in his head. I imagine it's a big warehouse, and there's l lots of partitions for weird stuff like bo kids born with tentacles yeah, and yeah. things like that. I, th uh, I imagine there's like quite an old care caretaker, and you <laughs> yes. go in there. You say, "I'm looking for it." He goes, "Hang on, hang on. I know where that. I put that somewhere. Hang, put on, that somewhere. hang on, hang on, hang on. Is hang this on. the one when uh, they shave the cat? No, it's <laughs> not shaving the cat. This oh. is the Max. The Max. I know Scotland. The shortbread. <laughs> well, don't don't give me the shortbread because that's putting me off. But um. The, uh, the what's the name though? Do you remember last week I was talking about the airy kid? And uh, <laughs> I think that's every week, Carl. That doesn't narrow it down. All right. Well, we we're talking about that airy kid in the woods, yeah. and um, did a bit more research this week. Okay. Found a good story out about a monkey. Right. Which I'll uh, told Ricky a little bit about it. Tell me. Come on, tell it now. No, right. no, no. no oh, I reckon me we it. should keep this. It sounds exciting stuff. No, right. so that's got him. Right. So we'll be doing that. <laughs> we've, we've got, got the audience. We've got we've got rockbusters again this week. Okay. Yeah. We've got, do we need them? Yeah. What, right. are you, what are you trying to get rid of this week? Cockroaches. Right, no, good I one. Can't, I can't think of a reason to keep them. No. Looking into that well, I, I sort the matter out, that's okay. coming up. <laughs> Excellent. We've got, um, I'm teaching you some more stuff. Oh yeah? Yeah. He phoned me up today, uh, yesterday it was, he knows he's been researching, like, educating Ricky. He said, uh, uh, what do you want to know about? I don't know, he said, uh, you interested in space? And I went, yeah, yeah. Phones me three hours later, he went, no, nothing about space. I went, what? He said, I couldn't find anything interesting. I said, you couldn't find anything interesting about space. Yeah. It's big. It's pretty interesting, Carl. He went, it's I went, big, but there's nothing there. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Millennium Dome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, God. so what I'm looking at, right? But right. no way, he said, is there anything else you want to know about? I went, all right, uh, I went, anthropology. He went, what's that? I went, study a man. I sent a man. He went, like what? I went, like, our roots from, from caveman through and all the, he went, you know, I said, Australopithecus, uh, Neanderthal. He went, well, you know all that then? I went, no. I, he went, right. He went, don't you want to know how a lung works or something? <laughs> how a lung works. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me how a fridge works. He went, oh, I said, it's just the gas, isn't it? I went, brilliant. I went, tell me how a microwave works. He went, I know. I went, I said, fella walking past in a laboratory with a bar of chocolate in his pocket, went past some sort of ray thing, it melted it, and he went, hold on. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. Explain to me how a microwave works. <laughs> right. So today we're doing, uh, sort of medical-ish type things under the banner of, um, colon then. Educate me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do it again. Colon then. Educate me. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's like, go on then. So, yeah. colon. <laughs> Brilliant. So that's, uh, oh. that's a little heading. You're gonna be learning three things, sort of medical-ish, uh, yeah. before three o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that it? Yeah, do you wanna, uh, Pretty much, yeah. A bit of suede. 
Norman. How many O'Reillys are there, do you think? No, I don't know. It's a task for you. <laughs> Suede, Animal Nitrate. That's really got a Johnny Marr influence at the end, that guitar, isn't it? Brilliant. And still, yeah. still brilliant. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Tell us about this monkey, Carl. You're gonna love this one, Steve, Go right? On. Uh, yeah, so last week we were talking about how, like, a lad left his family because there was problems at home and that. He went and lived in the wood, he got airy. Right. No, leave it there, oh, Rick. We haven't got time to go into right, it. Right, so that's what happened, and that's what happened. He lived with the monkeys. He went airy. That's anyway, what happened. That's what happened. Looks into uh, some other stuff about like airy kids and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came across this story about a bloke, right, who worked in a zoo. Oh dear. Right. So um, trouble's brewing. L loving his job and that, but it's, qu it's quite a lonely sort of job because you don't see many people. You're just dealing with animals all the time, right? Mm. So, anyway, well. he gets a bit pally with a monkey because it's the closest thing to to a human. Well, that he is. Right. Yeah, but you can't really go that close to apes. Well, it's dangerous. What, what do you mean? What type was it? What, do you Just mean let it was him tell the story. Was it a chimpanzee? I reckon it was a chimp, yeah. yeah I don't even know. So it was a chimp. It was okay. a chimp. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, does so it? So he gets pally with him. Right, so he gets pally with well, him. Well, have they gone holiday together? Well, no, I mean, it starts, off, it starts off just checking each other out and, uh, you know, probably sharing lunch and that together. Yeah. Right? Anyway, this goes on for a while. Is uh you know, they, they're getting on well on that. And then after a while, right, the monkey starts sort of imitating him a bit more and sort of walking upright. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Right? So he thinks, oh, that's a bit weird. Anyway, they get on really better and what have you. So he thinks he could he could live at home with me, this. Yeah. Because we're getting on the storm. Yeah. Right? So he takes him home and before you know Is this the it, beginning of Beneath the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I think it is. I think you've seen this on video. Well, I, I'm worried, because he's already <laughs> imitating him and they're moving in together. I'm thinking it's maybe a bit like single white female. <laughs> <laughs> single white zookeeper. Oh, brilliant. Right, so Go anyway. On. So it's moving in and it's getting used to sort of the, the normal human life. It's having a cup of tea in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Pinky uh, tips. As a... <laughs> As a, uh, it finishes the day off with a, with a... Oh dear. Finishes, <laughs> finishes the day off with what? With it does, a, a it does now brandy. move a piano at one point, does <laughs> he? He finishes the day off with a little brandy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he pours himself up. Is he wearing a smoking jacket? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carl, you're, you're listen, a maniac, Listen, mate. no, this is, this is why it attracted me, it's amazing, right? <laughs> so, he's having his brandy and that, loving his life. Um, <laughs> next thing you know, he sort of, um, I don't know if he loses it or he gets shaved, but the top half of his body is hairless. hairless. Right? Apart from his head. Right? So he's right. got a nice So it's the head. opposite of the kid. Well, no, yeah. This is what well, I'm that, saying. that would happen. Right. Well, hang on, but so you don't know if you he's don't shaved even know. or if How did it say, uh, then the, the I'll hairless, bring, what, what? I'll bring it in for you, the story, and then you right, can well, see okay, if I've gone wrong. Keep going, keep so going. anyway, so, wow. um, so this is going on and it, 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 he's having a great life. Then the zookeeper starts getting a bit annoyed because He's having a better life than the zookeeper. The zookeeper's in the this zoo. This is such <laughs> So the zookeeper's still got to do a day's work. The monkey's at home, he's partying, well, he's got his other Well, it gets to a point when he friend. says there's no point you coming in to the zoo, because the whole reason of you being there was because you're being kept there. Right. And he didn't want to bring the memories back, so he said, you stay at home. So you are ju you're talking such Just let him finish. God, I don't know if I can sit here and listen to this drivel. Let me- I, I'm fascinated. It's, near, it's it nearly over amazing. anyway, right? It sounds extraordinary, Carl. So, <coughs> it, he's walking up, right? He's having a tea in the morning, finishing the day off with brandy. Um, <laughs> gets a bit out of hand, only tries it on with the zookeeper's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make him go away, Steve. How does he do that? <laughs> well, because he's around humans a lot, he becomes a bit of a charmer. <laughs> and, uh, well, but, what, that, but what is it that he could do to seduce her? Pick fleas out of her? He didn't say. He's but, built. He was built. <laughs> yeah, he was well known. Uh, so what, what about that? Wait, what do you mean, what about it, Carl? It's obviously not true. It's obviously not true. This, this wasn't on the internet. This was in a book. So it's not a quick joke and just uh, put it on a website. This is in a book. I don't understand how. I love that he becomes a charmer. He's got better taste in brandy. <laughs> exactly. And he ah, oh, that what is. What was it that he was doing that seduced her? I don't know. I th maybe because he was at home more than the zookeeper was. <laughs> but what would he be doing, <laughs> Carl? <laughs> He's not going to be talking with her. They're not going to be playing like, trivia pursuit. Maybe, maybe she liked the silent type. 
<laughs> I don't, I, he didn't go into that, he just said it, that's when the trouble started. Carl, pay a record. Right. <laughs> Is that what Suzanne did when she brought you in? <laughs> Feeder, just the way I'm feeling. XFM 104.9. I love that. Carl, you're 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 panicking. You've just remembered a song from your childhood, and I don't know what you're talking about. But um, I'm gonna give out a number. Please take this number down if you can help, Carl. It's 08700. Eight hundred one two three four. Right. I, I'm not. I'm not that bothered. We were talking about a track from the sixties. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Quinn. Yeah. And it was on the same compilation. My dad had a tape in the car, and the tape was always on in the in the stereo thing in the yeah. car. And I used to sit, sort of, sort of sit through all this stuff I didn't like, but knowing that coming up soon was a song about a, a monster with purple eyes. It a wasn't Puff the Magic Dragon. Eyes. It wasn't. It wasn't that. A monster. There must be something else about it that give people do, a clue. Do you clue. remember a chorus or a few lines? Um, it says something like it was a one-eyed. It had big eyes, purple, and it eats people or something. The it big eyed purple eater. Wasn't there a song called something like that? I, the I, big eyed purple. And it was a hit. There was, was I'm it? sure there was a song which is something like the intergalactic purple eater or something like. That. It's some like it's a novelty song. Rubbish. <laughs> what the by the bonzo dog? Yeah, it's that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm sure well, if you know what car- look, 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 the telephones have gone mad! Yeah, well, we'll find out in a bit. I mean, I'm not that bothered, I'm not gonna buy it. It's just that we were talking about songs and that. It'll be good to know who it was, but- Yeah. yeah. Right, what? Rockbusters. Okay, right. now how long- where did you get the phone? Yeah. What, do you want to just answer Well, that's the phone, so just answer, answer the phone. Yeah, see what it is. Just see if someone's- Hello? Hello, uh, mate. Alright. Yeah, uh, that song, I don't know if it's by, or is that what you want? Um, that's the bit I wanted, well, what, really. What's the name of the song? Well, you know that how it goes, it's like that. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I d sorry, I don't think you've helped much, though. You, you, can't, you can't remember what it's called or who it's by. Well, no, I mean, I know the tune, but uh, that's about it. Yeah. But he's it done seems well. to me, Steve, yeah, but he's done well. He's given up his spare time to call in and sing us a song. Don't diss him. Rick, I'm concerned he's just only marginally remembering it more than Carl is. It was actually in, um, I think it was in the. Blob, no, it was in, in, in something like the Blob, actually. I think Steve McQueen was driving away and it was it, it, it running in a secret. This uh, is so very familiar. See if it, thanks very much, mate. See if we can get a title off someone. Uh, and uh, XFM. Hello, uh, yeah, I know the name of that tune. Go on. Uh, it's the, what is it, the Purple Eyed People Eater? Yeah, that sounds about right. And really? Who's it by? Yeah, well, I'll just, I'm just at work and, uh. Who is it by? It came to my mind. Do you know who it's by? <laughs> I don't know who it's by, mate. Sorry. This is not enough information. I wouldn't phone in we if I had ask the Lewis, but we asked him just what the tune was. But I want someone like Paul Gambaccini to call in. He knows what you know, what chart right, okay. position it got okay. to. Okay, right. right. Well, thanks we, very I don't much think this is enough information. Well, That's well, two people. The thing we barely is, got if you know the title, we can put it in the internet, can't we, and find out who did it. Yeah. That's full of Brilliant. information. Well, th thank you very much yeah, for calling no, I, I don't know why they bothered, frankly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, so like, No, I mean, I just think if you're gonna bother to call in a radio station, you're have the facts. You're have so all the facts to have. He hasn't got the facts and he runs the radio station. He doesn't run it. They keep him here like a mascot. He's like a pet, isn't he? They have him running around the office. God. Now listen, right. um, it's Rockbusters. I've got the uh, the prizes here, Rick. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we've given away some some shoddy stuff in the past. This but is it's the worst collection. Tight, is it? This is really scraping the bottom of the barrel, Carl. I mean, let's hold on. The phones are going mad. If, you, uh, if, you, if you're still phoning, hang up because we're we're not going to bother anymore. We really sorry about that. Maybe email us or something. How uh, many of these can we give away? Look Rick? at that. It's only only fools and horses. The, the, the it's video. the Christmas special from not this year, the year before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have given away so many of these. <laughs> I imagine there's charity shops <laughs> throughout London. <laughs> throwing them away. Yeah, throwing them away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we got oh that, that dear. and I, you know, if you didn't watch it, you know, if you weren't it one of the uh, 20 green, million that watched blue it. Blue-eyed, fat-legged, purple a people, if they had a big, and they had a big boo. It's something like that. Uh, and once again, the best chill-out album ever, with, uh, I mean, this pretty much rubbish. <laughs> It was a big boo boo. Actually, no, the songs were okay, but it, it's just basically a collection of songs you might have heard on adverts. <laughs> so enjoy that. Oh god, this one again, the best air guitar album in the world, <laughs> volume two. This, this is no longer an entertainment show. I, this is three people chatting to each other now and again. Sometimes we remember it's going out. Sometimes we just take a call for our own amusement. I, I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the same price again. 
Uh, it's the David Attenborough, um, uh, compilation of DVDs, <laughs> which I'd be very surprised if actually makes it to you. I imagine someone here will have had that long before we post it. <laughs> oh, dear. There's a t-shirt in here. XSM 104.9. You get sent a lot of, uh, Just crap in case you're wondering what you're listening to, you're uh, listening this is, uh, to. This is a what Quicksilver is that? t-shirt. What That's is that? Fine. What t-shirt is That's that? That's a t-shirt made by the Quicksilver people, so if you're a bit of a surfer dude, and by the look of the size of it, you're a midget. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say you're, midget. You're welcome to it. And this is, I think, the, uh, piece de resistance, Rick. I mean, what? I, cause you know the kind of fans we have, they're pretty cool cats, pretty yeah. groovy guys. Yeah, yeah. So I imagine they'll be loving, on DVD, <laughs> Doctor Who, the Aztecs. That's one of William Hartnell, the first Doctor's uh, classic episodes, <laughs> oh, on DVD God. there. Um, oh, you know, um, um, Rubbish, that's rubbish, Carl, those boys. You, you, I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, frankly. you know our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet, and Steve got post-it notes and put Geek on every page. And Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does. And, he, and I, I, it, I, I'm going to try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only, and it's, it's hilarious. And he's, he's, he was, I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd laugh. Play Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. Right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just, uh, three clues. Uh, <laughs> In this show, aren't well, we? I'm just—I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little. No, you did though. You just came out. No, I can't believe you. Three came out left field. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, but uh, I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just email in Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Well, I'm just annoyed. I can't. I can't. What are we doing? I'm just—I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this? Let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about him. Edit it down. Get this down to three minutes. It'd be a great show. Rockbusters in a minute. XFM. Learned some day by Bruce Springsteen from uh, his new album, The Rising, on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Former just phoned in and said uh, to Carl, uh, "Stick up for yourself. Don't listen to that Merchant. He does my head in. He's so arrogant." I don't think I'm arrogant. I think I'm mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think I'm sort of objectionable. I don't think it's arrogance. I think no. it's sort of nastiness. Yeah. I'm just not a very nice person. <laughs> But believe me, I'm not arrogant, I think I'm pathetic. <laughs> uh, we've had a lot of emails, um, s saying, could you bring back White Van Carl? Oh, yeah. Which is that section of the show where we ask the questions that the sun asks someone else. random punters yeah. uh, of Carl. But sadly, recently, they've got very politicised and very kind of, uh, basically a little bit depressing. So, uh, there's not really anything appropriate. But I have trawled the papers looking for other questions posed in other sections of the, uh, the sun. Good idea. Um, I was just looking here at the Dear Deirdre section, which is the sort of problem page. Uh, I don't know what your views are, oh, on, are on this. Oh, I'd love to see Carl. Oh, God, can we get him a job? I Just like ask, oh, my God, that would be amazing. Right? Well, here's one. I'd like to see uh, your view on this, Carl. I'm a happily married 42-year-old woman with four kids, yet I've developed a huge crush on pop star Darius Dinesh. Yeah. It sent my hormone levels through the roof, yeah. and last night I woke my husband up at 4am for sex. We've been married for 20 years and he can't believe his luck. Recently I've been having- I wanna- sorry, I wanna go to a- I'll stop you there, why are you telling me? <laughs> uh, Right, carry on. Sorry. Recently, I've been having erotic thoughts about Darius, morning, sure. noon, and night. Yeah. I haven't felt like this since I was a teenager and mad about Donny Osmond. <laughs> My husband is amazed at the change in me. We had sex twice last night and again this morning. Again? Uh, why are you telling me this? <laughs> yeah, go on. He's just boasting. This is not a problem. <laughs> There's yeah. not a problem What's here. the problem? No problem, just wanted to tell someone. <laughs> Thanks very much. I watched Darius on TV last night, and when my husband came home, I dragged him into the kitchen and we made mad passionate love. Right, they've done it- they did it then, twice last night, once this morning, that's four times. Uh, five to five times she's mentioned it so far. Yeah. Um, she's doing alright. Uh, my husband- this is- this is a great bit. My husband thinks it might be his new moustache. <laughs> Or that I'm going through the menopause, but you I know You were thinking different. of growing a moustache, just thinking, thinking of, of changing it like with the ladies. I love the idea, that's what he thinks it is, he's telling his mates in the pub. He's you should grow with these. Grow the with old these, Tom right? Selleck. Five times in the last <laughs> 24 <laughs> exactly. hours. Hooray yeah. for sexy Darius. So, um, what do you make of that then? What's, uh, what are your views on that? Well, Hold on though, if that bloke is reading that paper, 
That narrows it down it's a bit. It's gotta be, yeah. Uh, who else uh, d did he know? But His wife know, likes Darius, he's had sex five times that night <laughs> and he grew a new moustache. <laughs> he's thinking, I wonder if that's- I wonder <laughs> if that's <laughs> me. Maureen. Yeah, go on. But what's your concern? Cause she- I'll tell you what her problem is, she's worried that, um, you know, the reason that she's now kind of overly excited and she's, you know, having these great sex with her husband is because she's actually fantasizing about someone completely different, younger. She's having these wayward thoughts, isn't- she's a bit concerned about that. What's your concern? What, what, what are your thoughts? I reckon she's gonna start shoplifting soon and coming out in hot flushes. <laughs> go on. I just, um, they're both happy, aren't they? He's getting what he wants. Uh -huh. She's happy, I'd say, yeah, whatever, get on with it. Do you think that she could- Brilliant. she should confess? Um. She wants to be honest with him. I- I wouldn't, cause not- not that many fellas like Darius. Right. So, <laughs> if- if you're sort of thinking, oh, she'd rather have him than me, I don't What do you think Darius work. would think of this? Uh, he'd, he'd probably be happy with that. I mean, if- What would you do if you- there, what if would you do if you lot got loads of phone calls, right, from, yeah. um, women going, yeah. Carl, whenever you're on the radio, I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Your voice makes me- I'd say, all right, well, you know, it's all right. <laughs> I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, just in case anyone is doing that. <laughs> what would you do to sort of like egg him on a little bit to help him out? What do you think- What sexy what, things would you say? What do you think is your quality? What do you think people would find, you know, pretty horny about you? Is it your sort of mank wine, do you think? That? Just- just say this. London shit, innit? I don't that, I think... say that, but, you know, London, it's not that good, is it? Like oh! This. I think you've done it there. So, so that's say something of... quite sort of sexy though. Say something like you know, well, I love to love you. Say well, something I don't sexy. Say that. No, you say know, something no, sexy. Susan says to me, you know, do you love me? I go, yeah, you're all right. <laughs> Shop done. Uh, but and it's I know the thing done. is, I know that's true. Yeah, I know that's true. That's, so, that's brilliant. But cause one of the things that Deirdre says is that she's- she's wondering if, uh, this marriage is going a little bit stale and needs to be freshened up. They need to give a new spice, a new spin to the marriage. What would you do? What would advice would you give to spice up, you know, something that they've been married for quite some time? Get em, get em, get, I think get Darius, all Darius things, get David Snedden's new video <laughs> on the telly. Uh, what do you reckon though, Carl? Just- mm. just treat them. Do you know what I mean? Just surprise them now and again with stuff. That's oh. what I do. It's what you- you got those condoms, didn't you, that you got two- So, you, hang on, what- you've never done that. What, you've surprised Suzanne with what? You know, I've like, uh... He <laughs> stood behind the door and shouted out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some, yeah some Don't drop the jelly! <laughs> Yeah, you know, just- just the usual stuff. There was some free chocolate delivered to work the other day. I took her a bit of that home. Nice of you, that's really thoughtful. She didn't like dark chocolate, but I said, well, it's a thought. <laughs> so, I had it. I had it. But, um... You know you often benefit from any <laughs> gift that you give yeah. her. The chocolate, uh, the meal, the condoms. You yeah. Always, there's always something in it for you. Yeah, there is. I love the idea. She's but got bored with a Christmas present now, though. <laughs> what, the condoms? Yeah. Or the food that she ate. Oh, the, the condoms. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she's, she's got tired of filling them with water and throwing them to the passing <laughs> kids or putting them on her head and inflating them. I love the idea of asking problems. What do you think of, uh, erectile problems? You know that Pele advert, he goes, be careful, we haven't got erectile problems, call this number. What would you do if you're impotent? What would you do? What's the advertising? <laughs> Just saying, like, you know, if you can't, you know. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Why have they got him doing it? <laughs> well, well, he used to, you know, he used to be able to keep it up for hours, <laughs> the ball, and they. Uh, yeah. What would you do if you. To suddenly... advertise that? No, if you suddenly couldn't get. You know. What would you I do? I don't think it'd bother me now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're 30! <laughs> Oh, you're talking like you're an 80 year old. <laughs> no, yeah, but do you know what I mean? You've you sort of been there, done that now. <laughs> it's like the boxing and the dancing that I did. It was good as a kid, and so now it's like, yeah, take it or leave it. Oh my god! It's a right to Deirdre! <laughs>we might have a technical hitch here. We've had no emails and usually we get loads and loads. Um, so we're worried it's us. Can someone send an email? Uh, well... Yeah, just a test email. Yeah, but we won't know if they have or not. They might just be ignoring us. No one might be listening, Steve, so this isn't proof. I, I guarantee there's at least one person who would send an email. Maybe if Dicky Anderson's listening, he could do it for us. Anders! Anders! Do us a favour for all the pleasure we've given you over the last few years. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Somebody you know. the Rockbusters, might as well give them out. Well, let's check the emails working before we do yeah, it. Yeah, otherwise it's a complete- yeah. this- this whole show has been a sham and a farce and a waste of time. 
Well, I think they can take that as red. <laughs> <laughs> right, educate me, Carl. Right, well, uh, Go on, say, right. educate me. Well, what we uh, what we're looking at this week, we've we've done war, we've done. Um, we've nailed we done? that. We've nailed war. Did um. We did summed up war with a little French bloke whose battle cry was "John's got a moustache." Right. So, and last week we did science. What would you do on science then? Off. Airy kid. Brilliant. Right. Yeah. So this week we're looking at uh, medical problems. I'm sure we do Airy kid every week. Mm. Um, medical problems. Then I've got I've got a couple of things under the banner of. Uh, Colon, then educate me. Yeah. Uh, we've got. Um, this is interesting, right? Do you mm. know if you have a, an operation on your brain, <laughs> right? What yeah. they do is the. I mean, this is why I'd never go to the doctors. I don't like doctors because this sort of stuff freaks me out, right? They can operate on your brain, and what they do is they put you to sleep first, cut your brain case open. <laughs> your skull, yeah. Your yeah. brain case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then wake you up and operate on you. So you sat there with your head open, yeah. messing with your brain, and you well, don't no, feel anything. Well, there's no nerve endings, is there, in the brain? But still, it's not right, is it? <laughs> is it what, you think they do it for fun? No, they but- go, oh, go on, Reggie, wake him up so he's all freaked out. Well, on, is, it, is, it, is it necessary that you're awake, do you think, or- Well, they need the brain active, don't they? Yeah, but it is when you're asleep, you're having mad dreams. I had a mad dream the other day. Go on. No, I might tell you about it later, but there's no sense to it. But, so your brain's still, your brain's still- <laughs> okay. this conversation. Yeah, I mean, it'll turn out, I'll go, no, Carl, I was there, that wasn't a dream. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. but- <laughs> So, I mean, if I had an operation- On your brain, heaven forbid. Well, <laughs> operation anywhere, I'd like to sort of think, well, I'll have an injection, I'll go asleep, but when I wake up, it'll all be sorted. Yeah. yeah. The fact that- your brain the case is open. Open, and they wake you up and you think, oh, is it all done? They say, well, have a look in the mirror. And you, and yeah, your brain- See, I don't think they do that. I don't think they try and frighten you when you're doing an uh, operation. Yeah, I don't think that like, you go about your business and they sort of follow you around, dabbling. Yeah. No, but it's almost like they are having a bit of a laugh with you. Right, well, I'd just like to say now that they don't. Anyone who's going in for an operation on their head, uh, do not ever listen to anything but Carl wh says. Wh why have you got to be awake? Because you'll be bored anyway, you'll be sat there. They'll well, they, they give you a telephone directory look and they say, look how many Macs are in there. We've, that's the Scottish telephone directory. And, you know, time flies when you're counting <laughs> that sort of thing. No, but do you know, like, when you- What are you- what are you telling me? What are you asking me? I'm just saying how weird it is. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, do you know when you go for a haircut, <laughs> right? It's a bit embarrassing. Well, I don't anymore, but when you go for a haircut, it used to be a When bit you go for a haircut. It used to be a bit embarrassing when, like, they'd wet your hair and they'd make you have that sort of- Hitler cut because your hair's <laughs> wet and I used to hate it and I think, do you have to do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know it's what I mean, similar, it's you? very similar to uh, open, um, skull no, surgery. what I'm saying yeah. is it's almost like barbers like to do that to make you look daft and feel daft for a bit and there's women coming in and out and you're sat there with a daft haircut. Yeah. And this is what that reminds me of. Do you think that, do you think they do it in a shop window, this brain operation? I'm just saying it's a bit weird. Do you think, why are we doing it in John Lewis's? <laughs> Just so more people. I love the idea that that's what doctors are doing. <laughs> Let's make this guy look a bit stupid. Yeah. Open his brain. Look case. at the twatty look for this brain <laughs> out of his head. Take a Polaroid, Reg. Take, yeah, a, Polaroid. take a Polaroid. Look at him. Look, 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 at, look, look at his face. Right, look, right. Clock his face when I give him the mirror. Get this on camera. Put Carl this fake nose and glasses. So is on. that? Did you teach me something then? Was well, that education? I taught you that your brain, your brain case can be open when you're awake, and you just sat there, sort of letting them get on with it. Brilliant. I've learned that. I'll never forget that. Right. Go on. Anything else? You'll love- let's play a song cause the next one is amazing. <laughs> what, even more amazing than that? Yeah. Play a song? Yeah, bit of Bowie? No email still, by the way. No, I don't think it's working. It's not to working today. Lady so Stardust. We can, we'll have to do a phone in for Rockbusters. Off Blimey. the Ziggy Stardust album. Alright. Bit of David Bowie? Uh, when's that ever at anyone, Steve? Never. Lady Stardust off Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington is in the middle of educating me. Colon, then. Educate me. Right, so, um... I've learnt that you can, you know, fiddle around with your brain when awake. That's brilliant. I've never been a fan of Doctors, though, so this was a good one for me to, yeah. to look up, because... Yeah. Did I tell you the time... When, uh, the doctor said, uh, I was gonna die. Alright, keep talking. Right, ages ago, um, 
must have been about fifteen, right? And uh, at lunchtime there was this. We used to have a choice of stuff to do at lunchtime, right? We used to have um, like a like a burger place that had an arcade machine in it, right? So we used to go there and play on that and have a burger. Or there was this baker's, right, that my mum worked at and uh, did great cakes and stuff, right? So um, she used to like bring some home and that, but she couldn't always bring them home every night because, you know, they'd, they'd cost money and she used to get them for free. And they used to say they'd rather chuck them away than give them to the staff because there's a chance that the cream might be off. Right. Right, so they used to chuck them round the back. So I used to go round the back with my mate and eat a load. Brilliant. Scavenging, yeah. eating out of bins. <laughs> no, it was really, it wasn't out of bins, they were still in trays, but they just stacked them up near the bins, right? So this got out, I mean, it used to be a chocker. Uh, once the school found out, everybody used to go there and it'd be like, well, have a cake. <laughs> the headmaster called it, uh, <laughs> fighting the kids off. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> I'd have, uh, uh, you know, you just eat, I don't know, six jam donuts or something, and then you'd spend your dinner money on the arcade machine. Brilliant. Right? So it was a good good afternoon, really, right? So you'd do that, and this one day I must have had six or seven uh, jam donuts, a few Congress tarts. Uh, <laughs> What's a Congress tart? Just, I love them, it's me, I can't get them in London, right? So I'd have some of them. <laughs> uh, and uh, if anyone maybe, can get a Congress tart um, for Carl in London, please let him know. So anyway, this day, that that was just a normal day, do you know what I mean? You'd, once yeah. twice a week you'd have a load of cake. In your life, yeah. yeah a so normal anyway. day in your life. Uh, were, were the frog boys there with the, with the <laughs> webbed hands and the big heads? So, and the horse in the city? Uh, yeah. But the day after, one of these days, I had really bad cramp in my belly. Right? Yeah. I was like, in agony, could yeah. hardly walk, so I said to my mum, oh. <laughs> you could hardly stagger to the free cakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... I was in absolute agony. I said, I think, I don't like doctors, but you'll have to get a doctor in because I don't know what it is. I can't walk. She gets the doctor around. Uh, I won't say his name, but he said, uh, he said, well, doesn't look like he's got long left. Blimey. So I was a bit like, hang on a minute, I've only had a few cream donuts. Yeah. My man was panicking. Sure. He went. My dad came in from work. She said, oh, something's really bad with Carl. I think it's serious. It's, you know, the doctor's only ain't got long left. So he said, what? He said that and just left. So she said, yeah. So I'll have to call him then. So he called him up, said, uh, what's all this about, you know, Carl hasn't got long left, how long's he got? So he goes, oh, I was only messing. He's just got, he's just had some bad cream. Can you believe that? <laughs> well, the thing is, Carl, I like the fact your mum didn't ask any questions. I know. She yeah, didn't go into detail. Well, no, no, can I, you I, explain I, more, Doctor? No, I got a shoe off. I, no, but uh, she doesn't. She I, doesn't no, like no, I'm, you know, I don't want to diss you or your family, but I imagine if I was there, I'd have known the Doctor was joking. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, 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 I sound very arrogant there, but I imagine he went, what's he been doing? I had about six cream grounds. Oh, right. Oh, wow. Uh, he hasn't got long to live then. I'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think the Doctor did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the idea your mum just let him go. Yeah. Terrified, thinking, well, yeah. I'm not going to probe him. He's, he's, that's it then. Dad comes in. Hi, honey, I'm home. Anything happened? Uh, the doctor said Carl's going to die and then left. <laughs> Did he? I'll call him. <laughs> but anyway, that's why uh, these sort of things fascinate me. So right. we'll move on to this next one, right, which is brilliant. Go Dead on. short story. So, right, uh, old woman, about 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, she's normally fit and healthy and stuff. Nothing wrong with her. She's having a good life. And uh, one day she goes for a check to the doctors, yeah. just to check herself out because she's yeah. getting on a bit. Yeah. Uh, says take your clothes off and that, so she does, and uh, checks her out. Says yeah, you're looking good, you're looking good. Uh, turn round. Uh, he said oh god, he says you got a, a tumour on your buttock, right? So she goes oh, what can you do anything to sort it out? So they go yeah 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 we could book you in for an operation. It's best if we remove this. Books are in for an operation. Operation day comes, strip her down and that. They're all stood round, the doctors. Start to operate. It only turns out it's a pork chop that she sat on five years earlier and it had stuck to her buttock. Right, Carl. <laughs> I right, can forward you. I'm, I'm not, honest. Right. I'm, no, I'm, listen. Okay, no, 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 serious. Right, okay, Carl. I'm telling you now. I'm leaving. I'm no. never. I'm never doing this show again. No, I'm serious. Honestly, You're talking. Uh, I, I've never had any such. You are play record. Play record. <laughs> I can not believe it. it. What do you mean you can't believe it? Stop, stop the record. Stop the record. Stop the record. Right. Okay. Right. What do you mean you couldn't believe it? No. When I read it, I said I've got to tell this Richard. This woman I had a pork chop stuck to her ass for five years. You mental case. 
Of course she didn't. Syntax, Pry, XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, right, get off. Right, what you got next? Right, well, uh, running a bit late with this, but it's time for, uh, do we need them? We're, we're looking into what I'm really worried about this, cos th everyone's getting that last clue wrong. I reckon it's so rubbish that even your mental fans can't work it out. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one, but... Give that final rockbusters clue again. The Jamaican fella, uh, had to have some aspirin. Why is that? Why, why did he have to do it? Oh, no, hold on, that's changed. <laughs> well, you can, I mean, it doesn't matter, the story's Oh, it doesn't still matter. There. That's the point of a cryptic clue, isn't it? Oh, do, do. What have you got now? Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoken to someone about jellyfish, and that, and, uh, looking at cockroaches today. Right, now who's the expert? Um, it's a woman called, uh, Jessica Marshall. Right. Does she know that you're going to play this on the radio? Well, I called up, right, in the week and said, can I talk to someone about Just cockroaches? And she was like, is that Carl? She knows who you are? Yeah. Right, so she already knows maybe your angle, your approach. Yeah, she was And uh, she, she is an expert, she's just not, not just some random person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's the one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. And well, that's history museum? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> not sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much uh, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so, uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have a 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double-jointed? Cover I, I tracks. think you're grasping at straws or something. All right, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so, um, no. If They're not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got their mouth shut, they might... Be able to slide. Nothing to do with breathing. So just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and got bored after forty <laughs> minutes Again, and said, "Well, we'll call it right." That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No, pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Ah. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note, you won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well that uh, would be a useful facility, I agree, but cockroaches are great survivors, I mean they've been around for over 300 million years, they're one of the most primitive insects. Alright, well I've also, um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Yeah, they just just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, maybe maybe the twenty five uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make up. They're probably searching out food and 
Yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge and they'll become very, very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but, but I'm sure, you know, if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we, you know? I, well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yes. Yeah. I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year, right? The fact, I mean, I mean, 18 knees, where did you get that from? It's, uh, it's on the uh, internet. Uh, they can hold their breath for 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what you read and take on. Mad world, don't it? <laughs> right. The cure, obviously. Yeah. Awesome. Right, Carl's been taking phone calls for these clues. <laughs> right, and so everyone's been saying the same thing for the last one. He's been going, no, no, and I'm worried. I'm always worried. FD. I just overheard him on a call there going, <gasps> What have I been saying? Oh, no, it's FP. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. Right, give me the clues out. It's a roller. Right, tell people that's- we're really sorry to anyone who would have got that right. Okay, right, do the clues quickly. Tell them it'd be a rollover, so we have to do three new ones. Do you not write these You're down, You're such Carl? a- I don't- uh, I don't write the answers down in case Ricky looks over the thing and sees the answer. Why would I cheat? I'd rather you do something right with your life! Right, well the clues were, I've got three other jumpers like this one. Yeah. That was FT. Yeah. They got that, four tops. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Good, well done. That bunch of people can't make up their minds if they'd want to sit in the sun or not. That was C, they were getting that. That was charlatans. Charlatan, right? A bunch of them, charlatans, right? What, what, what do they <laughs> What's char- What's Charlie? No. No, sh it's like, shall I go out? Shall we? Charla. Charlatans. They got it, right? <laughs> Where I went wrong with this one, uh, the Jamaican fella, he had to have some aspirin, why? Um, it's my fault, you know, I'm not, I'm not cutting, there's no point passing the book or anything. Um, I said FD, a lot of people were saying, uh, Fred Durst, like, f four Ed Ertz, which is a good <laughs> one. Yeah, which would have been as good as any of yours. But I made an error, so we'll roll it over. No, 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 what is the answer? We'll, ro we'll, we'll roll what the What is the answer? Over. Jamaican fella what? Add some aspirin, why do that? What's the, what's the thing? FP. FP, it was Frida Payne. <laughs> Frida Payne? Frida Payne. Frida Payne. Frida Payne. That's awful. Frida. You've got to write these down next week. Yeah, this is I'm, right. I'm sorry, you are, right. Uh, you're I, the producer. I, think, I know, I know, but I've had a busy week, haven't I? That's Just doing not stuff an today. excuse. That isn't an excuse. Our excuse is we don't. We have. We don't care. <laughs> yeah. You, you do put care. the work in and you, then make a mistake. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's better not to try than try your hardest and be rubbish. <laughs> do you see what the point? We've got. We don't care. But you've got standards. Yeah. And, and you're, you're not meeting them. You're for- think of that! You're not even reaching your standards. <laughs> God! <laughs> right, uh, well that's that I guess. Well, the prizes will be, uh, giving those away next Bollocks week. again. Uh, Just and, completely- uh, Song for the ladies to end the show with. It's from Nick Cave's new album, Nocturama. This is a track called He Wants You. Back next week. Remember, free to pain. <laughs>